Today, we are talking about a company that makes everything from professional filmmaking tools to robot selfie sticks. They pretty much invented the consumer quadcopter market and along the way became the first ever billion dollar drone company. But how did they go from a prototype in a dorm room to being one of the most recognizable filmmaking brands in the world? To find out, this is everything you need to know about DJI drones. The story of DJI starts back in 2005 when Frank Wang, a student at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and model plane enthusiast, was given a $2,300 grant to conduct research and develop a drone. At first, Frank just wanted to design a flying toy that wouldn't crash, like, all the time. But lucky for us, he didn't stop there. Just a year after getting that sweet, sweet college cash, Frank officially founded DJI in his dorm room. The name stands for Da Zhang Innovations, which roughly translates to great innovations without limits. To kick things off, Wang and two classmates rented a tiny office in Shenzhen, China, which many consider to be the manufacturing mecca of the world. With access to all the components they could ever want, the tiny DJI team could literally design a prototype in the morning, build it by lunch, and test it in the afternoon, which is exactly what they did. And for months, Wang skipped class to work on growing the company. Initially, the company just sold parts like autopilot systems and gimbals, but their sights were set on building something much, much bigger. In 2013, DJI released their first consumer drone, the Phantom Menace. No, that's a joke. Uh, I mean the Phantom 1. With its now iconic white plastic body, this quadcopter was a ready-to-fly drone system that included a secret weapon. Lasers. Beep, 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 beep. The Phantom 1 came with internal GPS. That's what I'm talking about. This system was a game changer and allowed the Phantom to auto-magically hold its position in flight and return all by itself when running low on battery. Like any new technology though, there were limitations. The flight time was less than 10 minutes and the battery took almost 90 minutes to charge. That is not a good ratio. The retail price was about 700 bucks, but that did not include a camera or mount. You just had to kind of strap on a GoPro with some duct tape and rubber bands and hope for the best. Luckily, less than a year later, DJI released the Phantom 2, which extended the flight time to 25 minutes in the range to 300 meters. The Phantom 2 came in two flavors. The Phantom 2 Vision, which was the first drone released by DJI to feature an integrated camera that could capture full HD video at 30 frames per second, and the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, which included DJI's first three-axis gimbal and a longer 700 meter range. This gimbal was a huge deal and made aerial footage go from looking like this to this. Smooth as butter. At this point, DJI was apparently tired of making small drones, so next they released the S900 and S1000. These massive octocopter, meaning eight friggin' rotors, were built like tanks and featured retractable landing gear. The S1000 could hold the weight of a full-size DSLR and the slightly smaller and cheaper S900 could carry a stripped-down GH4, giving us some of the first consumer 4K aerial footage ever. But with a $4,000 price tag, most normal people couldn't afford it. Fast forward to the end of 2014 when they drop the Inspire 1. This new, sleek, sexy quadcopter wasn't as insane as the big S-Series, but still cost 3,000 smackers, so certainly wasn't for everyone. It did, however, introduce some really cool new filmmaker-centric features, like a removable 4K camera for future upgrades, which they actually did. Dual control operations, so one person could fly while the other person controlled the camera. If you only had one pilot though, you could use the new autonomous waypoint navigation, meaning the drone could actually follow a preset path while a single pilot could focus on controlling the camera. Other upgrades included better motors, carbon fiber landing gear, which retracted, huh? Huh? and a gimbal that could rotate a full 360 degrees and tilt 120 degrees. Production companies and rich kids who could afford the Inspire one loved it. But for most people, the Phantom was still more realistic. So in 2015, DJI released the Phantom 3, which like the previous versions, came in multiple flavors. The Phantom 3 Standard, the Phantom 3 Advanced, and the Phantom 3 Professional. 
When it came to the camera, you could get exactly what you needed. The standard got you a 12 megapixel sensor with video up to 2.7K. The advanced upgraded that to a Sony XMAR 12.4 megapixel sensor, also at 2.7K. And finally, the top tier gave you that same Sony sensor, but unlocked it so you could record 4K. The advanced and professional versions also got you some kind of fancy Russian GPS called GLONASS, which sounds illegal, but allowed the flight range of the advanced and the professional to be double what it was in the standard version, 2,000 meters compared to 1,000 meters. Then in 2016, DG released the Inspire Numero Dos. Not only was the flight time increased to 27 minutes, but instead of slowly boring 49 miles per hour, it was now able to haul at an impressive 65 miles per hour. They didn't stop there. They also dropped the price from $3,000 to $1,999. And some amount of sense, I don't know. But this made it an affordable tool for mid-sized production companies, or again, those rich kids who had a lot of money. Fucking rich kids. Next up, DJI released the Phantom 4, featuring a first of its kind front and bottom obstacle avoidance system. It could now detect objects and automatically stop or move around to avoid collisions. Seriously, you had to go out of your way to crash these drones. On top of that, it shot 4K video at 30 frames per second and had an increased battery life of 28 minutes. It was the best Phantom yet. People loved it but it couldn't fit in a backpack. Unlike their Phantom drones, the Mavic Pro was designed to be as portable and compact as possible. Folded down, the Mavic Pro was about the size of a water bottle and still featured a three axis gimbal system, a 4K camera, and could fly for 27 minutes. <laughs> this bad boy could easily fit in a standard backpack or even cargo shorts if you're into that kind of thing. Cheaper, smaller, great footage. Lots of people bought one of these. I bought one of these, they're nice. After the success of the Mavic Pro, DJI was like, oh damn, people really love these tiny drones that can fit in their cargo shorts. Could we make them even smaller? In May 2017, DJI announced the release of the Spark. This little weighed less than a Big Mac and featured a two axis gimbal and a full HD camera. As their most affordable drone to date, the Spark was aimed at not just filmmakers or tech nerds. Anyone who wanted an adorable flying robot could get themselves a Spark, launch it off their friggin' palms, and shoot full HD video. Also, you could control it with your mind. And by that I mean you could control it with your hand, but use your mind to control your hands. Am I right? I use my mind to do that. DJI didn't forget about the professionals though. Enter the Matrice 600. Capable of lifting 13 pounds, AKA a large watermelon, this was a drone for only the most serious photographers and filmmakers. With the ability to fly cinema quality cameras like the RED for up to 16 minutes, the Matrice is mostly used for big budget movies. It sadly does not fit in the pockets of your cargo shorts. Sorry, Doug. Fast forward to 2018 and DJI releases three new Mavic drones. First up, the Mavic Air. This compact, affordable, entry-level drone was sort of like if the original Mavic Pro and the Spark had a little baby, but with better obstacle avoidance and an improved 4K camera. It was tiny, even the controller folded down, making both the drone and the controller able to fit inside even the smallest cargo shorts. That one's for you, Doug. Next, DJI released the Mavic Pro 2 and the Mavic Enterprise. The Mavic Pro 2 came with two camera options, a built-in Hasselback camera with adjustable aperture or a smaller sensor camera that had the ability to zoom 24 millimeters to 48 millimeters to be exact. Both these cameras had a greater dynamic range than the previous versions and supported a hybrid log gamma HDR. <laughs> if the Mavic Pro 2 is the filmmaker's drone, the Mavic Pro 2 Enterprise, as the name suggests, is designed for space travel. The Enterprise version was actually designed for things like utility inspection, search and rescue, and law enforcement. This version of the Mavic had the ability to easily attach three key DJI accessories, a speaker, a dual spotlight, a beacon, or a phaser. With the Mavic Air, the Mavic Pro 2, and the Mavic Pro 2 Enterprise, DJI now had a complete line of foldable drones, each tailored to their own individual markets. Balance 
in the universe had been achieved and Thanos rested. Who would have thought that a little company that started just 12 years ago in a dorm room would go on to control more than 72% of the consumer drone market worldwide? Experts estimate that they will have sold over 4 million drones by 2021, which is amazing, especially considering that 10 years ago, nobody even knew what the f a drone was. Will DJI someday turn into Skynet and enslave the human race with super advanced drones? It's possible. All right, everyone, I'm Eric Beck, and this is Indie Mogul. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You can leave your ideas for future episodes in the comments below. If you aren't already a subscriber, do it, do it. And if you are a subscriber, hit that bell button so you will never miss episode. I'm leaving now, goodbye. Subscribe, do it. Experts estimate that they will have sold over seven, no, four million drones. Seven would be impressive.